Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello. Listen, does she know where they live? Does she know? ¿Sabe ella dónde viven ellos? Escuchad. Does she know where they live? La pregunta es, does she know? Where they live va en sentido afirmativo. No, where do they live? Where do they live sería direct, pregunta directa. ¿Dónde viven? Where do they live? Pero esto no es pregunta directa. Es una pregunta sobre ella, que si sabe dónde viven. Does she know where they live? Where they live? Does she know? Fijaos la pregunta de does she know? Does, la S al final de does, muere. Porque la SH de she es muy fuerte y invade la palabra does. Does she? Does she? Does she? Does she know where they live? Does she know where I live? Does she know where you live? Does she know where they live? Does she know where we live? Does she know where the president lives? Does she know where the king lives? Does she know where you live? I don't know. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 137. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. Does she know where they live? ¿Sabe ella dónde viven? Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase. Does she know? Sí, eso es como formamos preguntas usando la tercera persona del singular y el verbo auxiliar. Does, does, does. Does he o does she. Y aquí tenemos con el verbo to know, que es, como sab bien sabemos, conocer o saber. En este caso es saber. Does she know? Does she know? Ahora, does she know where they live? Es una pregunta indirecta, por eso no invertimos el orden del sujeto y el verbo al final. Entonces, does she know where they live? Te pongo a prueba con otras. Quiero que formas primero la pregunta directa y luego la pregunta indirecta. Por ejemplo, pregúntame cuántos años tiene él. Muy bien, how old is he? Y ahora pregúntame si ella sabe cuántos años tiene él. Muy bien. Does she know how old he is? Y no, how old is he? Perfecto. Mañana viene otra becaria. No entiendo por qué quieren otra becaria. No lo sé. I don't know. I mean, ella no sabrá nada acerca de la oficina. She won't know anything. Y yo ya sé todo. I know everything. Does she know that you can pay for your parking on the second floor of the building? Huh, claro que no. No, she doesn't. <sighs> Two, pregúntame si ella sabe que se puede pagar el parking en el segundo planta. Eso, does she know that you can pay for your parking on the second floor? No, no, she doesn't. <sighs> well, does she know that Mr. Fernandez is the boss? Clara can know. No, she doesn't. Does she know that he normally has tea and not coffee? What do you think? No, she doesn't. Does she know anything? No, she doesn't. But you don't know anything. You can't tell me if she knows anything. Pues, yo no tengo que preocuparme por ella. Este es mi sitio. Ahora vamos a ver una palabra clave, la palabra dónde, que significa where. Y la pronunciación también es esencial. Hay que decir where y no where. Como la primera sílaba de la palabra huevos. Where, where, where. Repítelo conmigo. Where. Muy bien. Where. Perfecto. Pero aquí where no funciona como una pregunta. Es parte de una frase normal. I don't know where it is. You know, I don't know where is it. Where it is. Te pongo a prueba. Forma primero una pregunta directa y luego formaremos la pregunta indirecta. Pregúntame, ¿dónde trabajo? Jimena, where do you work? Muy bien, con el verbo auxiliar. Where do you work? 
Y ahora pregúntame si ella sabe dónde trabajo yo. ¿Cómo es? Muy bien. Does she know where you work? Sin el verbo auxiliar esta vez. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que es código postal. Postcode. Does he know your postcode? Él conoce tu código postal. Qué ilu. O sea, how exciting. O sea, I mean, Funchi va a venir a comer aquí. Aquí, a donde trabajo. Where I work. Ajá. Pero no sabe dónde trabajo. Mm. She doesn't know where I work. Creo que no. She doesn't know where I work. Porque la verdad, nadie sabe dónde trabajo. Nobody knows where I work. My friends don't know where I work. Ajá. Uh -huh. None of them know where I work. A ver, a mí me encanta donde trabajo. I love where I work. I like it where I work. Ahí con todas las plantitas. <coughs> que me dan un poco de, no sé. Pero I love it here. I love where I work. Funchi no sabe dónde trabajo. She doesn't know where I work. Ese es el orden de las palabras. She doesn't know where I work. ¿Ok? Dilo tú. Thank you. Pues no sé, es que... Where my friends work, donde trabajan mis amigos, es fantástico. ¿Mm? Where they work, it's fabulous, it's fantastic. Where I work, I don't know. It's a bit boring. Aquí siempre lo mismo. Where I work, oh, qué sé yo. A lo mejor le digo que vamos a otro sitio y ya está. Porque I love it where I work. Pero no sé. A ver qué hacemos. llegado a la última parte de la frase they live does she know where they live sabe ella dónde viven ellos y no decimos does she know where live they o does she know where do they live con el verbo auxiliar es una pregunta indirecta y por eso estoy repitiendo tanto porque los alumnos suelen poner o invertir porque piensan que where o what en estos casos funcionan como preguntas y no es el caso entonces they live they live y no invertimos sin el verbo auxiliar también. Entonces, veremos más ejemplos. Do you know where they live? ¿Sabes tú dónde viven? She doesn't know where they live. Ella no sabe dónde viven. Y hay que sacar la lengua al decir they y tener la i muy corta de live. Si no, suena como live, que es otro verbo entero. Live, live, live. Y ahora vamos a ver la frase entera. Does she know? Esta vez con el verbo auxiliar. Does she know? La tercera persona en singular, does. Does she know where, que aquí no es una pregunta, they live. Eso es. No, no. Don't tell me that. No me digas eso. Bye. Hi, it's Mr. Strong. And say hello to these. Well, me acabo de enterar que Michelle vive con su novio. Yeah, I don't know where they live. Where do they live? I don't know. I don't know where they live. No sé dónde viven. Oh, it's frustrating. Now, cuidados, porque si digo where do you live, es la pregunta directa. Si te digo I don't know where they live, es indirecta. Escucha la diferencia. Where do they live? Directa. Indirecta. I don't know where they live. No usamos auxiliares. Sí, la estructura es igual que la afirmación. I don't know where they are from. I don't know where they live. Practica las preguntas poniendo I don't know delante y verás que no es igual. No, no. La pregunta directa es muy diferente que la pregunta indirecta. Y cuidado con la pronunciación. No es leave. Leave es marcharse. Yeah, leave is marcharse. It's live, live. Oh, I'm going to find out. Me voy a enterar. I'm going to find out where they live. Hi again. Listen, she helped me finish it, even though she was busy. She helped me, helped me, helped me. Fue difícil pronunciar eso, I can see. Ella me ayudó. She helped me. Helped me. Escucha. She helped me, helped me, helped me. Hay que practicarlo, lo siento. No hay truco aquí. She helped me, helped me, helped me, helped me finish. También podemos insertar to. She helped me to finish it. 
Yo no lo uso y no se suele usar, pero un poco a veces sí. She helped me finish it. Me ayudó a terminarlo a pesar de estar muy ocupada ella. She helped me finish, finish it even though, aunque estaba muy, era, o estaba muy ocupada. She helped me finish it even though, even though, even though, even though, in spite of the fact that she was busy. She helped me finish it even though, even though, even though, though. Vibra hasta el cerebro en esto. Al decir though, esa TH vibrada. She helped me finish it even though she was busy. Yes. <laughs> Bienvenidos a la clase número 137. Y hoy tenemos la frase She helped me to finish it even though she was busy. Que es, ella me ayudó a terminarlo aunque estaba ocupada. Y vamos con el primer punto. She helped me to. Que es, ella me ayudó a. Y aquí tenemos el verbo to help en el pasado simple. Helped. Helped. Cuidado con la pronunciación, que no es helped, sino helped. Fíjate, helped. Repite conmigo. Helped. Pt. Muy bien. Ahora necesitamos el objeto. She helped me. Nunca decimos she helped to me. Uf, suena fatal, sino she helped me. Ahora después del objeto se puede poner el to más infinitivo o si quieres directamente el infinitivo. Por ejemplo, they helped her to fix it. Le ayudaron a arreglarlo. Maria helped him carry it home. Aquí sin to. Podrías decir to carry it o puedes decir carry it home. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. You know, last week I was sick and I couldn't go shopping. Oh. Anyway, lots of people helped me when I was sick. Oh, thank God. Lots of people. So now, today, I'm going shopping to say thank you to all the people who helped me. I wonder why they helped me. Oh, because they're my friends. That's why they helped me. <laughs> Silly me. Eso es. Decimos helped me. Repeat with me. Helped me. Good. Say they helped me. Perfect. So destiny came round. And Destiny helped me when I didn't want to eat anything. So I'll buy her a present. Maybe I'll buy her shoes. Hmm. Okay, and then Zach came round and he helped me when I felt really horrible. It's lucky they're always together, Destiny and Zach. Hmm. Anyway, they helped me so much. And then Sarah came round and she helped me too because she told me about all the lovely things she has in her shop and that helped me a lot. And then my husband, he offered to take me shopping and then he helped me carry my bags. Aww. Ahora vamos con la segunda parte de la frase, que es finish it, terminarlo. Ahora, antes dijimos que después de help le puede seguir el infinitivo con to o sin to. Por lo tanto, aquí tenemos to finish it. Ahora, aquí tenemos el verbo to finish y hay que tener mucho cuidado con el sh del finish porque muchos lo pronuncian finish, finish y está fatal. Tenemos que decir finish, fíjate, finish, finish, repite conmigo, finish, finish. Muy bien. Y como tenemos it... Al lado decimos finish it y enlazamos las dos palabras como si fueran una para que suene más natural. Finish it. Finish it. Muy bien. Vamos con unos ejemplos. My teacher helped me to finish it. Did you fill out the form? No. Can you help me finish it? Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, to fill out, que quiere decir cumplimentar un documento. Ahora, un último ejemplo. I have to finish it by today. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Well, sometimes the hardest part about a masterpiece is knowing when to finish it. Sometimes you just have to finish it. That's a problem that I often have. I don't want to finish my work. Once I start, I can't finish it. But this is looking pretty good. That's right, we say finish it. Eso es. Finish it. Finish it. No es finis, sino finish. Finish. Finish it. 
finish it. Now, I just, I want to keep painting, but on the other hand, I think it, it looks pretty good. I think maybe it looks almost perfect. So maybe, tell me to finish it. Tell me to, thank you. All right, I'm gonna finish it. Now I'm gonna finish it. Maybe I'll just finish it by, by signing it, yeah. Perfect. Look at that. It's a real masterpiece, isn't it? Sometimes you just have to know when and how to finish it. Vamos con la última parte de la frase de hoy, que es even though, aunque. Ahora, even though hay que tener cuidado con la pronunciación, porque no es even, sino even. Y though se dice the, the, though, y no se dice though o talk, sino though, though, even though. Muy bien. Ahora, también podemos decir although, aunque although es un poco más suave. Even though hace más contraste con el aunque. Así que vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. We went for a walk even though it was raining. Even though I was tired, I finished it on time. Recordad, enlazando, finished it on time. He helped me to carry it even though I could. Y ahora, ¿cómo se dice en inglés? No te lo diré, aunque confío en ti. A ver. Eso es. I won't tell you even though I trust you. Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Look how much work I have to do. And even though I'm already busy, I have to organize all those files, reply to emails, make phone calls, even though I already have enough work to do. That's right, even though. Even though you understand me, I want you to repeat it with me. Even though. Good. Again? Even though. It was the same yesterday as well. I helped Mr. Pilgrim with his work, even though I was busy dealing with customers. And the customers are being so rude this morning. Even though they can see I'm busy, they still keep asking me questions. It's like, it's like they don't understand even though I'm busy. And when I was speaking to my friend Bob, there was, there was a big long queue of people. Even though I'm busy, even though they can see me working, they still want to ask questions. <sighs> so unfair. <sighs> I think I'm gonna take a break even though I have so much work to do, even though I'm so busy. <sighs> Hello, listen. Uh, if I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. If I hadn't run into a John, if I hadn't run into John, if I hadn't run into John, si yo no hubiera tropezado con Juan, anda, Juan, tu por ahí. If I hadn't run into John a few days back, a few days back is another way of saying a few days ago. Don't worry. A few days ago, casi prefiero que digáis a few days ago. Pero los nativos muchas veces diremos a few days back. If I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. I wouldn't have been able, no habría podido invitarle al acontecimiento, the event. I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have been able to invite him. Es difícil decirlo, pero es importante entenderlo. Decimos, wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event if I hadn't run into him a few days back. Hello. If I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. If I hadn't run into John, de no haber, bueno, tropecé con Juan, me encontré casualmente con Juan. De no haberme encontrado casualmente con Juan, el otro día, hace unos días, a few days back, a few days back. If I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able, no habría podido, 
by frase. I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event, al evento este, if I hadn't run into John. If I hadn't, if I hadn't, if I hadn't, if I hadn't. If I hadn't run, run, ran, run. Aquí es tenemos el participio, run. If I hadn't run into John, if I hadn't run into John, de no haber tropezado, si yo no hubiera tropezado con Juan, si yo no me hubiera encontrado casualmente con mi antiguo amigo John, if I hadn't run into John, if I hadn't run into John, to run into, to run into, boom, ah, John, ¿tú qué, tú qué haces por aquí? Por estos pagos. If I hadn't run into John, if I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. Ole, it is a great day in Spain. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I just ran into Joaquin Cortez. I ran into him. I ran into Joaquin Cortez. That's right. I, Wayne in Spain, ran into Joaquin Cortez. Ask me who I ran into. Who did you run into? Joaquin Cortez. That's right. I ran into Joaquin Cortez, the best flamenco artist in the world. And I got his autograph. I'm never gonna wash this arm. <laughs> That's right, because I ran into Joaquin Cortez. I'm gonna keep this arm just like this to remember it forever, because I ran into Joaquin Cortez. I should have danced flamenco with him, or for him, you know? Oh, maybe I ruined the perfect opportunity. You know, he's a flamenco dancer, just like me. I'm pretty good, right? I can't believe it, though. I ran into Joaquin Cortez. It's even better than the time I ran into Penelope Cruz. That's right. This is the best day of my life. I can't believe it. I ran into Joaquin Cortez. Okay, let's continue with the sentence. If I hadn't run into John, yeah, si no me hubiera, si no me hubiera encontrado casualmente con mi, mi, mi amigo Juan, if I hadn't been able, if I hadn't run into John, a few days back, yeah, a few days back, a few days ago, norma, lo más correcto es a few, bueno, correcto no, lo más usual es a few days ago, pero si mucho remontando unos cuantos días, a few days back, es más coloquial. If I hadn't run into John a few days back, a few days back, a few days, a few days, a few days back, hace tres o cuatro días, a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. No habría podido invitarle. Okay, a few days back, a few days back. Okay, the word of the day, cap, C-A-P, cap. Cap is gorra, tipo gorra con visera, como el cap, baseball cap, el que juega al baseball, baseball cap. También el tapón de una botella, a Coke bottle cap. Some people collect bottle caps. I had a neighbor, a friend who collected bottle caps. Y también, esto no lo sabe seguro. El casquete polar. Se dice the polar ice cap. Se la gorra en el mundo arriba. The polar ice cap. Casquete. Oh, hello there. How are you? Did I tell you what happened a few days back? Oh, I said a few days back. You don't know what it means? Listen, a few days back is just another way of saying a few days ago. Nothing special there. A few days ago. Come on, say it with me. A few days ago, Margaret. Good. Well, anyway, I ran into an old friend a few days back. Francis. Have I told you about Francis before? Well, we used to be great friends a few years back. She used to live on my street, I think. Ah, but that was a few years back. Anyway, we used to go to the bingo together. Oh, but we stopped being friends after a while. She was constantly talking, and I love bingo. But really, I should forget about it. That was a few years back. Anyway, I ran into her again a few days back. And you know, I would have won that bingo if I hadn't run into her. Bloody Francis. Oh, hello. Have I told you what happened a few days back? We're back, together again. Let's finish this sentence. If I hadn't run into John, if I hadn't run into John a few days back, I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't, I would not have been able, 
to invite him to the event. No habría podido de, de, de no haberle visto por casualidad ese día, hace unos días, a few days back. I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. Yo no sé de qué evento se trata, pero es un event. I wouldn't have been able, 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 I wouldn't have been able. Los nativos decimos, de, decimos I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been. Es complicadito aquí. I wouldn't have been. Recomiendo que digáis, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been able. I wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. If I hadn't run into him a few days back. Yes, if I hadn't run into him a few days back, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. Vaya frase. I wouldn't have been able, sorry. I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the event. Hi, we're planning a big party. That's right, I'm really excited because it's going to be a big bash. Yeah, bash is otra palabra para fiesta. It's going to be a huge, mira la pronunciación, huge, Bash. Now, yesterday, I ran into John. Yeah, to run into is, pues, encontrar sin querer. O podemos decir, I bumped into John. So I ran into John, I bumped into John, and I invited him. But if I hadn't run into him, then I wouldn't have been able to invite him. That's right. If I hadn't bumped into him, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the party. Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to. No habría sido capaz. Practica esa estructura. I wouldn't have. El I wouldn't have, cuando lo contraemos suena a of. I wouldn't have been able to. Dilo. I wouldn't have been able to invite him. If I hadn't, esto es, esto es el más difícil de los condicionales. Yeah, el pasado condicional. If I hadn't run into John, I wouldn't have been able to invite him to the party. But don't worry, I ran into him, I bumped into him, and now John is coming to the party and he's bringing champagne. Woohoo!